and welcome back in the Three Man Bunk Bed. I'm Zach Bradley, the host. I got Nolan, aka Fat Squirtle. Hello, over there. hello. What's going on? What's going on? Um, we are going into. Let me see. This is week eleven. Week uh, eleven. Yes. Three weeks until uh, until uh, until playoffs. So look, we got a full agenda for everybody this week. Um, we have two bunks on video, uh, and Nolan, we got a surprise guest. Surprise bunk. Month. We've got someone new to the show. So everybody welcome in uh, the three-time consecutive champion and co-commissioner of our home league. Uh, everybody, this is this is Caleb. Trash. Caleb, thanks don't, for making it. Don't, make it, don't say trash. head's going to get big. Just because I was one of your two losses in Super Bowl, hey, no one. <laughs> so what's up, Caleb? Glad to have you on finally. <laughs> well, finally. Finally, yeah. You know, I think of a couple things you need when you start a podcast. And one of those is audio experience. So you guys started a podcast and didn't invite the person you know with the best voice. <laughs> That's true. That's true. What kind, what kind of crap is that? You know what? Also, you know what? Let, let them feel it, Caleb. Pull the mic in close. Give them some of that radio voice. Oh, yeah. Coming to you live. <laughs> Three man bunk bed. You can't use that. That's my voice. I don't I don't consent to you. Oh, it's a trademark. Okay. I need bleeped. Where's you the consent bleep to button? by coming on. Is name, image, and likeness count for voice? That's not to say it's not in the yes. thing. It's not in the. I don't know. Yeah, no, uh, we'll figure it out. Tom Tom Brady sued the podcast because they used his voice in a comedy special. It's kind of amazing. Yeah. But so, all right, well, cool. So, look, uh, everybody. Uh, so, yeah, again, Caleb, um, uh, three time champion of our league. He's been asking to get on, not asking, but we've talked to him about He's it. Been so, begging. we'll probably have him filter Pleading. in. Pleading. Um, the residual three man bunk bed Cole is still struggling. Yearning. Yeah. Yeah, he's still got those new baby issues where uh you know, I guess we all have kids. Fuck them uh, kids. Uh, on here. It's it's <laughs> some, of us, some of us have kid, right? Yeah, no some of us have a, kid. Yeah. Some of us older kid. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that must be nice to have kid and older kid. I, some I, of us I, have I'm kid here. and other have teenager. I'm here with multiple Dang, he's uh double digits now. now. Yeah. Yeah, so, all right, cool. Um, Look, don't forget, uh, check us out on the Fantasy Football Advice Network. Um, You can also find us on YouTube and Spotify. So, uh, all right, moving into week 11. uh, Before we jump into what we really want to, it's it's officially the start for the playoff push, guys. we got three weeks before most uh, leagues, at least most leagues that we are in, start Mm -hmm. playoffs. Playoffs start around week 15. And so we've got a couple of uh, series planned coming up in the next week. Uh, this week, next week, and the week after for the playoff push. Uh, but we would be remiss if we didn't talk a little bit about bye weeks this week. So um, this week on bye week, uh, we've got the news. we got New England and New Orleans. Not much missing out on New England, right? Like it's just it's just Ramondre. There's – and barely Ramondre. Yeah, I mean – Like he's the only fantasy rival. Ah, Demario Douglas. Okay. I mean, I see you there. Yeah, Ramondre is – I think he's running back 14. You know, you're going to miss running back 14 on your yeah. uh, your lineup. He will. But, um, you know, if you got, like, Ty Chandler or, you know, one of those guys this week, you're probably okay. You'll be you, know, right. you can stream them. And, and Play there, right. guys. You can fill them there. Uh, New Orleans, you're definitely going to be missing Alvin Kamara. Caleb, how uh, how's Kamara doing for you this year? Um, since coming back, you know, he's the number one since he's been back. And somebody tried to – Convince me of that otherwise today. We're not done yet. Because he is. I'm not done uh, yet either. You're not taking that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you want to talk about yet. that? No, 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 no. No, I'm not done trying to get him. We'll, we'll work yeah. on it. We'll work on it. You're um, going to offer a little bit more. Saints players bad. Hey, Other man. players good. You know? Also, you've got Taysom. I'm just saying. It's true. There's some I've leagues. Seen some that, teams win with some Taysom plays this year. Those 12 team, um, uh, like deep leagues, and, and definitely anything larger than 12 team leagues, like Taysom is rostered. Um, let's see. Sleeper has him. I'm actually interested in that. Let's I'm, let's find Taysom. It says number 10, but he is also in there in tightening and QB, so I don't know which is which. That, that cat, b- despite not having a football position, is rostered in 71% of Sleeper leagues As and he started should. in 19%. Okay. So. I didn't realize Olave was number 15 receiver. He, those 19% where he's starting this week are making bad decisions, but, yeah, I get it. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, yeah, you're going to miss Olave. Um, you're not going to miss Michael Thomas, but we'll, we have a brief moment to pay tribute to that a little bit later. Um, let's see. Indianapolis. Jonathan Taylor starting to come on. Yeah, you know, a little bit. Had a, 
had a decent game. Nolan, it was decent. You I'm can fact check. Hold on. Uh, I mean, it was 14. That's fine. Yeah, I mean, you'll take Solid 14 week. every Solid week. week. Right? Yeah. And then the real uh, the real uh, miss on the Colts roster, not named Gardner Minshew, is Michael Pittman. Clearly. It's also uh, defense. Yeah, wide receiver it's 11. Miss. Okay. I'm That's running fine. their defense in three leagues, so uh, it's a sucky week for me because they're defense number like six, a... I think, or something like that. Nolan, are you a Colts defense homer? Is I mean, like kind of. I mean, I it's like... easy to pick the Colts defense when they have three bad, three easy matchups. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's three true. teams that suck that they play twice uh, a year. I mean, one of them CJ Stroud. I don't know if we can say they suck. Like he's Man. an MVP conversation yeah, right year. now. Yeah. Well, even yeah. this year it's his um, first year. Yeah, well, true. I'm saying yeah. yeah. And then Atlanta, not a lot of meat on that bone. Um, yeah, nobody cares. You know, it's it's just the running backs, maybe. Um, maybe. And weirdly, Jonu Smith. Um, the real like tight end one on that team. Yeah, tight end, right, like tight end two rostered, tight end one production wise, which is kind of weird. I mean, Bijan is uh, running back number nine, so okay, okay, gotcha. All right, even so look, though they don't even near enough. Um, if you haven't started looking at your lineups, which it's Wednesday night, so you should start looking at your lineups. Those are the guys you're gonna have to be replacing. Um, be on the lookout. Uh, I have found in the last two weeks, guys, my. Um, my strategy on the waivers has not been to make claims on the guys Tuesday night, but to see who people are dropping with my eye towards uh, the later half of the season. So the back half. So, um, you know, if that's the strategy, people are going to have to drop. You know, Nolan is making the decision this week strategy wise to go without a kicker and a defense in a league so he doesn't have to drop the ones he has. <laughs> um, I also, I run a lot of Colts defense. I also run Young Way Koo on all three teams also. So, uh, so yeah, not gonna drop um, him. So I'm just gonna run with that one for a week. That's only if you can afford to lose games, and it's no true. one's fortunately in that position. Comfortably in first in multiple leagues, then uh, it's fine. <laughs> Especially for like a guy with a, a Chargers name on his uh, on his team, like that's that's frustrating. Nolan, you're winning for them because they struggle. Yeah, they struggle. So, yeah, um, you all right, have cool. To change that Herbert fully loaded name. I won't like every ever. other week. It is my boy. Some, some weeks he's not loaded at all. Well, look, this is a, uh, and we won't get into the names too much because I don't know who all is exactly going to watch it. We are not a league that has like family friendly fantasy names. No, okay, definitely. There are a couple of names in here that are a little tough. Um, and uh, and uh, Caleb, we didn't even tell you. <laughs> speaking of bad fantasy names, in our work league, uh, a guy changed his name. I'm going to have to put it in the chat. But it's in a it's, work league. Yeah, in a work league. Like with the owner of the the, the building, uh, I just put his name in the chat. I won't share it live, but I'll let I'll let you see it for no reason. You that's know. just what he that's just what he changed his name to. So uh, yeah, shout out to those of you who aren't afraid to have uh, NSFW uh, fantasy names. So all right. That's our bye weeks. Anybody got anything on bye weeks? I think we're good there. Mostly it's not that big a deal. You got a couple of top 15 guys. You got basically one top 10, really top five guy, and then everybody else you, you're probably okay on. Um, all right. This week's uh, playoff push focus is going to be quarterbacks and tight ends. Uh, we're going to get to tight ends second as quarterbacks. Um, you know, uh, we, we got a lot to go with that. So, uh, Nolan. Well, kick us off on these quarterbacks. Yay. So, first thing I want to talk about is, like, some of the injuries. I feel like this has been, like, quarterbacks-wise, probably the biggest injury year there is, especially with some more news today. Uh, most guaranteed, highest-paid contract in NFL history, out for the season. And uh, worst contract in yeah, NFL history. Yeah, so he has officially played in three years on the biggest guaranteed contract of all time, 11 games. That is startling. <laughs> Yeah, well, bad was, things for was, bad people. Was that two hundred thirty-eight million dollars? What is that divided that by? Like eleven? Okay, oh, I thought God. it was more than that. It's a lot. It's way too much. Um, but between him, you've got Kirk on IR for the year. Anthony Richardson, Daniel Jones, and Tyrod Taylor. Jesus, they're down to QB three. And then the couple like minor injuries you've had come and go. The Fields breaking his thumb. You had Carr in concussion. Whatever the hell happened to Jimmy G? Like, yeah, I don't know. How do, it's what do y'all think? The like, year, injuries wise, it's been pretty rough for a lot of it's, quarterbacks. It's the year of the backup. Yeah, 
Yeah, no doubt. Like, there yeah. are, people were he talking like the rookies coming in were probably one of those weaker QB classes in a long time. But you've got a lot of rookies playing this year. They tied the record for the most rookies to start a game, like in one season ever. Not to mention some of these veteran backups are playing, dude, like like out of their brains. So we're always, at least for me and Nolan, I know Caleb. We'll, we'll find out where you live. We're always going to shout out Gardner Minshew. Okay, shout out. Yeah. love him. 100%. Gardner Gardner Minshew. They had a better winning percentage when he played in games than when their starting quarterback yep. played. Yep. So you and can't. Then, that's not an argument. And then um, Nolan and I discovered this earlier, Caleb. Do you know what Josh Dobbs is this year, quarterback wise? Like what his ranking is? This this cat is a top ten fantasy quarterback this year. Yeah, he's he definitely worthy. The Browns. It's definitely it's worthy of Vikings fans shaving their eyebrows, though. Yep. Yeah. Oh, that's that, first. Love that clip. Okay, <laughs> that that is full commitment. Um, and the dude has played out of his brain. Like he started as a Cleveland Brown. Then he went and won some games with the Cardinals, won enough to lose them at a first place, uh, first place, first overall pick. Then he goes to the Vikings, and all he's done is win two consecutive games against good defenses. Like, he's stats. insane. Yeah. The last, and the sorry. only issue I have is the comment of he's playing out of his brain. The man is a rocket scientist. He's you're doing, right. It's all within <laughs> that brain. It's all. Yeah, you're right. It's it's in there. It's capable. He's playing yeah. just how he should. Well, I mean, know. and the like. In the past three weeks, he's scored 26, 27, 28 points, like, respectively. Like, it's worth, I feel like, there were a lot of people, me included, just be like, no, it's a fluke. He's going to drop back off. And, God, do you have to start him the rest of the season at this point? Yeah, I mean, you look at some of the teams he's going to play. Like, he's going to play, like, he's got Denver and Chicago next. And they're Maybe not he, like, this week. Denver like, the Denver matchup's a little bit easier than Chicago. Then they yeah. get by, so he's not even been on a bye yet. Uh, <laughs> then they're going to have Las Vegas, Cincinnati, Green Bay, and Detroit. So we're not talking about, like, the cushiest matchups. But he hasn't been playing cushy matchups either. He mm-hmm. just got through playing New Orleans. Um, and, and, you know, they've been sitting people down this year, as I very eloquently talked about last week, and I was dead wrong. Josh Dobbs dominated uh, uh, last week against the Saints. So, yeah, I think, like, if you're one of those rosters, one of those millions of rosters that have an injured quarterback, you could do a lot worse mm-hmm. than Josh Dobbs. Yeah, and definitely, like, looking into the playoff picture as well. He's got some good matchups heading into the playoffs. Maybe not as much the Bengals, but Detroit and Green Bay is kind of they're going to be shootouts in those two. Yeah, no yeah. doubt. And Bengals was actually his second lowest scoring game of the year because he's already played him once this year, just on well, a different team. That's not a to mention second chance of that defense, and you know what they say: it's hard to beat a team twice. Yep. And instead of throwing to Hollywood Brown, he's going to be throwing to Justin Jefferson. Yep. Is he that's back this week? If we've been confirmed, I know he has a projection on uh sleeper but i don't know i haven't see. seen anything whether he's coming back or not you go j-e-s last i heard is he is ramping up his workouts let me see uh the, the head coach is uh let's see referred to him as day-to-day um he's gonna do a little bit more today we'll see how he responds to that a little bit more tomorrow but he's day-to-day they're just waiting for a clean bill of health but if they keep winning he has to play yeah. right like like you went from oh kirk got hurt Let's maybe think about shutting him down, uh, shutting Justin Jefferson down for the year to go in. Freaking Josh Dobbs is winning games. Like yeah, we're in the playoff push. I think that's a, and this is a game against. Uh, I just lost who they're playing, but Denver. Denver. Uh, he probably could use to just sit out another week because him being healthier. I don't think Denver is putting up too much of a a push on anybody so far this year. Yep, and I uh, think we'll get. Um, Sorry, I think they'll get KJ back this week too. So, like, he cleared concussion protocol last week. He's questionable already, so I think he'll suit up this week. So, I mean, you know, Denver's not a pushover them. defense, though. Like, they have eight picks this year. Um, also, like, them as a team are kind of coming together. Like, the past three weeks, Russell Wilson kind of looks like old Russell Wilson. Um, yeah, his fantasy scores like don't Russell really show Wilson, it, but sure. yeah. But, like, the team as a whole is kind of coming together. Uh, Javante's back and healthy, too. Like, he scored 21 points last week. I I feel like they finally are putting all the pieces that they were supposed to put together the past two years. They're finally coming together. I'm kind of high on the Denver the rest of the year. You're a fan of Denver. Sorry to hear that. 
Yeah, no, I kind of hated saying it. Yeah, but. I mean, look, Nolan, they just played the Saints defense. Uh, Josh Dobbs did. And the Saints defense had three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve picks going to that game. You know how many picks they got against Josh Dobbs? None. No, none. Freaking goose egg. Yep. So yeah, I look, I, I can't talk about Josh Dobbs badly anymore. Okay, because I shredded him last week against my team, and he turned around and shredded my team. So uh, I'm believing in the uh, I'm believing in the the Una head. I mean, it's all one like one thing here. The toe. All right. All right. What else on our quarterbacks here, guys? So, um, well, I know we talked there for a minute about how people are playing great that shouldn't. I know we talked about it a lot at the beginning of the season, but you've still got Baker too, who's still just kind of lighting it up down there. Um, he's scored over twenty points the last three weeks. He had a little bad stretch there in the middle, but the beginning and lately he's been killing it. Also, yeah, I was going to be a Baker fan. Let me ask you this. We're talking about quarterbacks. This guy has been exceeding expectations, and I feel a little yucky talking about him, but we have to. <laughs> Do we think Dak Prescott's going to keep this up, this back half of this year? Uh, Yeah, kind of. He's on my, uh, hey, he's on the resurgence. We should literally look at him the rest of the year. Yeah, dude, Part last three notes. games, you're talking about, like, th- like, his lowest game in the last three games is 34 points. I mean, the one before that was 26, Jesus. So. Yeah. Uh, the, and he's playing against the Rams, the Eagles, and the Giants. Um, I mean, he put 46 points on the Giants. Yeah. yeah. But the last time he played the Giants, they put 46 points on him, but he only put six fantasy points on them. It's true. So, I, Flip the Dak, is all, Dak is always a roller coaster. You're either going to get under 10 points or you're going to get a bunch of points because he actually plays well that game. Yep. Next two weeks, he's got a 20-plus projection, Carolina and Washington. Damn. Yeah. I, I I'm excited for that Washington game. That should be a shootout. Washington should be a shoot. Well, I mean, well, I don't think a Washington's offense can compete with the Cowboys' defense, and I don't think Carolina can put up points that Let's requires Let's talk about scoring. it, then, because it's on my nuts, <laughs> too. At the beginning of the year... What? One of we... my big hot takes was the Commanders were going to be a top five offense. So. You've been wrong a... before, Nolan. I have been wrong before. But their QB is the number three QB on the year. Brian Robinson, number six running back on the year. So tired of this already. Terry McLaurin, number 17 receiver on the year. And Dotson is kind of lower at 48. So you've got two top 10 players, a top 20 player, and then Logan Thomas or tight end is tight end 13. They don't have a bad offense. They have put up numbers, especially fantasy numbers, not so much real life numbers, but fantasy was they've got players you need to be putting in your lineups on that team. Nolan, I'm going to do this only because it's fun for me because you did this to me. I go, I will say the claim was there'll be a top 10 offense and I filtered by points scored so far this mm, year, mm. and they are number eleven. Oh my god! And, and it's that feels so pretty close. good for me internally, because <laughs> Caleb, that is the very definition of a oh. not top ten offense. Okay, definitely just, taking the over. <laughs> I'm putting it out there. They're close though. Sorry, yeah. Nolan. I had a debate earlier this year, Caleb, about Arkansas having a top ten offense ever, and we we could not find it. We could not find the the, the best year they had was the year after their Heisman candidate running back left. They were 11th one time. So a little bit of just rewards there, Caleb. Just a small bit, though. <laughs> just a small bit. Um, okay. All right. So, yeah, look, um, never too early to start looking at your playoff matchups. In some leagues, uh, you still have this, like, today and tomorrow, your last week for trades. And then, of course, when you look at your wire, your waiver wire, and you look at players that are currently available, like, don't just look at their points projections this week. Look at – uh, the next couple of weeks, if you need the push for the playoffs, if you don't need the push, then look at who they're playing week 15, week 16, week 17, because that's when you're in the money, right? That's when you're you're competing for a championship. Everything else is just bonus. So uh, anything else on quarterbacks before we move to tight ends? Uh, One more. Uh, Kyler's back. Kyler's back. Shout out. Only 17 points in his first game back. Um, but I he was playing think. Atlanta, who doesn't have a bad defense. They're solid. And this is his first game in – a year and a half, a long yeah. time, and uh, so. in about almost exactly a year. Actually. Okay, 
Not to mention, I got to tell you, modern science is a marvel. You can't tell he tore his ACL. Nah, dude, he was moving so fast. He's, I mean, look, everybody's like talking about Aaron Rodgers coming back too quickly. Literally, look at look at Kyler play right now. He's yep. insane. That's one week. It's one week. But he, he was helped me beat the you this week. Guy in the field. He helped me beat you this week. I know. I didn't play kicker. Okay. Right. No, that was that's all the difference. You're doing the me strategy this week. I'm just copying you a little bit. Yeah, Nolan. If I could give you some advice, maybe not. Maybe play kicker. Okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. That wasn't your right. fault. That's because uh, Josh Allen and Stefan Diggs shit the bed. You should have beat me. It's true. It's true. The, the kicker I picked up was the number one kicker of the week, too, so that helps a lot, too. Hooray. 21 points from a kicker can help you win fantasy Damn. football games. Yep. And look, somehow the Cowboys defense went from 40 points scored against the Giants to eight points scored against the Giants. So it's frustrating to watch Dak and that stupid Cowboys offense score 40 you know 46 points and the defense only get eight okay that was i was banking on a better performance when you only need 14 points to beat the giants you don't really have to go out there and gunsling they're on qb3 right now he has 400 yards he did gunsling speaking of giants you guys had josh on yeah that's true we're we're taking fantasy advice from josh now is this, do you bring him on as a what not to do? So, well, that's hard because we were dead wrong last week. Uh, Nolan oh, Ali yeah, I was team. real bad. I not said play Andre Ishevis. No, Caleb, that... so in the three-man bunk bed world, um, nobody here is an expert, okay? No. Uh, I know. I've heard the intro. We're very open about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I've we, heard the um, intro. Yeah. I'm yeah. just asking. Oh, you listen? Like oh, you're a listener? I listened like the one episode coming on here to know how I should act. Because uh, you guys bad. don't like how I act, act sometimes. Badly. No, Come it's on. fine. But you know? I saw Josh on like four or five episodes. You guys like bringing him along. Hey, here's an example of what not to do in fantasy <laughs> football. <sighs> Bless his heart. Well, look, you're already a, a different option for Josh because Josh eats every time. So every single episode, dude is munching on something. Well. Yeah. He, he, well, he's, okay. Well, you're wearing a thick boy. Well, uh, I had a salad for dinner tonight. No, oh well, you know, maybe you can fit that that hoodie a little better. It's okay. Um, all right, yeah. Look, uh, Nolan, I, back to the quarterbacks. I agree with you. I think Kyler makes for a great option in the back half of the year. Trey McBride is looking explosive. James yep. Conner just came back. So, and, and again, Kyler looked video game fast. I mean, you know, he's gonna be a good option. But do the Cardinals want to do well this year? They, they click, want to win. Their head coach does. I tell you, this isn't anything from that Miami situation where, like, they were clear. I don't know if Flora said it was ownership, but they were clear, like, taking uh, uh, views. Like, the Cardinals, that head coach is trying to win games right now, even if they, even if they shouldn't. Um, you know, so I think they're going to do everything they can. So, we talked – I want to say something about losing and winning when you're not supposed to, like the coaches. The whole – you know, Stroud, we're in the MVP talk um, yep. and everything. They were the second pick. They ended up with him because everybody obviously wanted Bryce Young. The only reason they got that is because they won the last game of the year. Yep. Um, well, it was an overtime or a last second field goal or something crazy. Um, but it's probably the best thing that happened to them was not getting the first overall pick, which is still weird to think about. Yeah, they would have no, ended no. up with Bryce Young, who's, you know. Let me tell you, the best, if we're going to. If we want to go hunting for the best thing that happened for the Texans, it was no Bill O'Brien. Wow. You know, you get rid of Bill O'Brien, you go one year past that, and they have a, a potential MVP rookie quarterback. They're loaded with talent at the skill positions all of a sudden. And the I mean, literally fleecing of the Out of uh, nowhere. Browns. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's – it's it's uh, they, they look they, – they're and, you know, it's not like they're nine and one or something, but, like, they look – they look good. They passed the eye test. Mm-hmm. Um, and C.J. Stroud's stats are literally good. So They've made a lot of no-name receivers fantasy relevant this year, too. That's something else to look out for. Like, C.J. Stroud's in the hunt for Rookie of the Year. I don't know if he'll win MVP. It feels He's like – got Rookie of the Year. Yeah. I feel like that goes without saying. It's You start going, like, I am interested to see what he does against teams that are in the playoff hunt the back half of this yep. year. Yeah. Um, what that looks like. Because he's going to play – like, there is a difference between front-of-the-year football and back-half-the-year football. Mm-hmm. The way teams play, like, 
The NFL doesn't really – it's not soccer. It's not rugby. They don't have, like, points differential that matters. It's just Ws and Ls. Yeah. So teams are going to play a little bit differently this close to the end of the season, trying to make sure they just get a win, right? They just – you know, if it's 20 to 19, it's still a win. Yeah. So Because they are also – I'm looking at it now. They are playing a bunch of teams that are in the hunt. Like, you've got Jacksonville. You've got Denver, who's on the resurgence. Yeah. The Jets are somehow still – hanging around they're what five and five at this point which is wild to think about there's like 10 five and five teams yeah Yeah. well i also you like the jets still have a good defense oh yeah they have the best defense in the league if they had an actual quarterback they they'd be the probably the favorite if aaron hadn't gotten hurt oh yeah uh, no doubt. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we're talking about Zach Wilson, and they're still like maybe in the hunt for playoffs. Like, <laughs> you know, so disgusting I, to say out loud. I didn't want to. Yeah. I didn't want to cheer for Aaron Rodgers at all. Um, but but damn, he he would make a big difference on yep. that roster. Yeah. So well, okay, Aaron Rodgers right, would make a big uh, difference on any roster. Cool bit. Well, you I'll just I said Aaron Rodgers would make a big difference on any roster. Also, how do you feel about C.J. Stroud playing? Tennessee twice in your fantasy football playoffs. I think he's going to humble hey. the Will Levis uh, truthers. Will Levis <laughs> should have be. never been in the fucking NFL. We've been saying this <laughs> since he was in college. I'm just trying he's to tell bad you. Bad in college, he'll be bad in the NFL. That mayonnaise, coffee drinking, banana pill eating weirdo. I hope CJ Stroud puts 100 points on him twice. Okay. Yeah. I'm with you. And I don't hate the Titans. As a bunch of guys from Tennessee, so we have. I wasn't talking about, like, what you hope happens. I said what you actually think is going to happen. I think the win. Look, I think the Titans uh, are – I mean, they're they're scrappy. They've got Vrabel. But I still think the Texans win those matchups. They have the 25th rated defense. Like, they don't have a good one to stop them. Yeah, I mean, who who for the Titans, like, strikes fear into you? Jeffrey Simmons, no maybe. That's kind of what I was getting out there. It's about I was it. trying to set you up, but you kind of fumbled. You got so defensive. You got forward hands. Though. I wasn't defensive. I, Will Levis pisses me off. Okay, He's just <laughs> a filthy human being. Well, what I was trying to lead oh. up to was C.J. Stroud is a possible fantasy oh, yeah. MVP for your He could win you a fucking league. league. He'll win you a playoff game. And yeah. uh, who got him in ours? Uh, was that Bing? Um... Tyler? Oh, God. Uh, no, it's Tyler. It is Tyler. God. So, man. somebody that won't be in the playoffs. Got him. Oh, he's three he is seven. like a trash that's basket amazing. this year. I, I love that. Uh, yeah. That's still uh, the biggest fleece trade I've ever done is that one I did with Cole in the Dynasty League that got you oh, yeah. Shroud. Golly. Yeah. Tyler and his weird drafting strategies <laughs> haven't paid off like three years in a row, guys. So. Never well, paid I was off. talking he's to him about that today. Like, this this is a it's like a microcosm of fantasy football and the woes you experience. So at the front of the year, let me read you off the list of his running backs, and you'll go at the front of the year, like he had a deep running back stable. So these are his running backs: Austin Eckler, Tony Pollard, Najee, Javante Williams, um, and then you jump down, and he's got like Jamal or, or uh, and he's got Zeke. So at the front of the year, you were going like, damn, Tyler loaded up on running backs early in the draft. Now, the only running back out of those group that I would start is Eckler and maybe Javante, right? Like, n- now his running back stable is pretty bleak, I think. Yeah, I mean, I think that goes back to doing your research a little bit and knowing whether no, you- to take Alvin Kamara a little early to uh, let him sit oh. on your bench for four weeks and lose a couple games <laughs> to be on that? a four-game win streak. This dude's like fucking <laughs> bat myself on the hey. back. Well, when you win I mean, three years in a row, let me know. Yeah, he did. Oh my god! Years. When was the last time you won? How long ago know. was it? I don't know. You're just saying something because you won last year. He's literally like, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna say mean things to you. Did you? I don't. Remember. I actually have the last place trophy from last year. <laughs> oh, I, I remember giving you a trophy. I don't remember which one it was. Our experience on this podcast range, it's a broad range of finishes. Okay, I mean, it's it's a lot. So, uh, all right, let's do tight ends. So uh, this has been a weird year for tight ends, I think. So usually you go like, if you didn't get the top three guys, they're not important. You could you could stream the position. This year. I think we have a ton of fantasy relevant tight ends. Mm-hmm. Like I've got three on my roster that could legitimately play. So I've got on mine, I have Kelsey, 
Sam Laporta, shout out rookie tight end Sam Laporta, and I've got uh, Trey McBride, star. who's uh, who's coming on pretty strong yeah. here at the back half of the season. So like, I've got three tight ends that could, that, that should get double digit points uh, every week, and Nolan has won a championship with three tight ends. Okay, I have. I have. Caleb's giving me the stank look about it these was, tight ends. Uh... So, Kelsey in the yeah. second, Andrews in the fourth was a steal that year. Yeah, that was, that was insane. Um, God, that's filthy, Nolan. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, look, um, so we, we said that to say, um, like, look at your tight ends. Do your research on it. Look at their matchups. Um, make sure that you're paying attention because these dudes are, I mean, it's it's like they're going to win you championships if you play the right guys the right weeks. So, for me, uh, an example that, that I'm working through is I need to shore up the running backs on my team and I had all those tight ends, right? But I have to reconcile like that value with other people's value on tight ends. So I'm working now to get with Caleb uh, a potential a trade. It started with Kamara. We have since downgraded, uh, and we're talking about uh, a different running back. But you know, I've got a top five tight end that we can trade, and then uh, Trey McBride, who I think is going to finish really, really strongly in the back half of this year. So um, I have to decide if I want to keep my three tight ends and roll the way it is. Um, or or try to get that running back depth. So in our league, we could play three tight ends, right? Like we got tight end and two uh, flexes. Yeah. So, let me see. So don't, I mean, sleep guys the, uh, don't sleep on the the league winning tight end right now. It's probably going to be Hawkinson. Josh Dobbs yep. loves him some fucking Hawkinson. That he caught eleven passes last week. It's true. Well, it's, I will counter Hawkinson with. Again, and this is almost – I mean, it's, I'm not quite patting my back like Caleb. I'll do but, it. But Trey McBride had eight catches for 131 yards. So he had 22 points last week, Nolan, without a touchdown. Jeez. For a tight end. Yeah. It's filthy. Yeah. Um, and so if that production keeps up and he just regresses to the mean on, like, touchdown catches, he's only got one on the year, right? Like, it's the Deontay Johnson effect. You go, like, the kid's going to blow up your roster and win you games. Yeah, but can he put two games together so far? Yeah, for real. It's a lot of single-digit games. Double-digit, 5, 25, 5, 22. This is the playoff push. And right now... You need somebody consistent to win playoff games. He is consistent every other week. Okay? He's consistent. Double-digit, single, double-digit, single, double-digit. So maybe not against Houston. He's going to come back, though. Yeah, maybe not against Houston, but maybe I'll play him against the Rams. I've got that luxury. I've got three tight ends, okay? <laughs> Play whoever I want. So let me ask you about this. Um, uh, it's my other tight end, so we're just going to work on mine so I can try to win a championship. I appreciate right. your time. Uh, Sam LaPorta, <laughs> currently tight end four, uh, had a little bit of a like a humbling week last week. Uh, four catches. You, you can't bring me on this podcast and try to trade me your tight ends and just big up your tight ends the whole time. Yeah, we can. Yeah. Put down, you try to put down Cole Commit, and he's right behind Sam Laporta. In fact, even tied in points with Sam Laporta. So I don't yeah. want to hear that shit. But I bet it doesn't finish that way. Well, we'll see. It doesn't finish that way, right? Let me see. Let me get a look. Let me look at old Commit. Let me see. Yeah, I mean, he's just okay. You know, I mean, he's fine. Yeah, but his best games were without Justin Fields, who's coming back, by the way. Tyson Badgett featured him. Justin Fields does not. Maybe Tyson Badgett taught Fields a little something, something. Maybe Throw it to the big guy. How to, how to arm wrestle, since he comes from, like, a arm wrestle pedigree. Nolan, you give me your thinking eyes. Sorry, I was thinking. I was trying to remember Dawson Knox's injury. So that I could remember how long he's going to be out for. Because since he's been out, Kincaid's been getting a lot of passes. He was placed on the IR 20 days ago with a wrist injury. He's going to – so that would – at least four weeks uh, for 20 days ago. So we're coming up on the finish of of week three. So we got one more week before his 21-day practice window can even be opened. Yeah. Hmm. Ricky tight ends. We're in a world Ricky where we're talking ends. about it's crazy, right? Playing Ricky tight ends or second year guys. Komet's a second year guy, right? Yes. Uh, yes. So we, so Caleb and I have been debating for the last five minutes on Ricky tight ends and second year guys. Like that's that's the world we live in. I mean, I mean a lot of the older tight ends. Like who are you looking at? Hawkinson is killing it. Kelsey's killing it. Andrews is having a 
fine year. Like, he doesn't stand out, really. It's looks like it says tight end three, but I didn't realize. He hasn't stood out at all to me. Yeah. Um, well, it's just microcosm of that tight end position where it's well, all like, you know, one big game and they're shooting up the rankings. <laughs> Andrews is a – he's got six touchdowns right now. I think That'll that do it. Damn. Pumping up them stats quite a bit. Mm. Well, and another guy that I look at that's that's not having a terrible fantasy year, but like has a chance to break out for you at the end of the year is is a guy like Evan Ingram. So he's tied in eight. Um, you, I mean, you'll take that at your tight end position, but he has no touchdowns. Um, like he's tied in eight without touchdowns. So you know, we get into the back half of this year. Hopefully, they they you know you got to keep working on it. You got to start executing the red zone even well, and they sign him to that contract like. Dude, like if, if Evan Ingram just catches a couple more touchdowns, he'll be a top five tight end. Um, I mean, in the same vein, you've got George Kittle, too, who's tight end six. He ha- only has four touchdowns all year, and three of them came in one game. Yeah, and and Kittle's, the, Kittle's capable of, like, extraordinary feats yeah. uh, as a tight end. Like On that Evan Ingram, uh, he is very consistent with about seven or eight targets a game, and it looks like his snap percentages are on the way up right now as well. Yeah, I think his issue is Travis Etienne has been money. <laughs> like, uh, you know, he, they're getting rushing touchdowns. Let's see how many – let's see Lawrence. Let me pull up our T-Law guy. I watched in a league – I watched Trevor Lawrence get dropped today in a league. I, honestly, how he's been playing, he kind of deserves it. Yeah, so Trevor Lawrence has, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine touchdowns on the year. So they're rushing the ball. Like, they're, they're, they have rushing touchdowns. Um Let's see, ETN. Yeah, ETN has seven touchdowns. He literally has almost as many rushing touchdowns as his quarterback has passing Tank touchdowns. Bigsby has two touchdowns. So the running game, ha- does that happen often? Does that sound like a weird stat? The rushing attack has the same amount of touchdowns <laughs> as the passing attack? Yeah, especially for a quarterback that was supposed to be the, the next great, you know? There's plenty of stats on him of he's not what he was all made out to be. Yeah, He comes from Dabo. And if we're going to talk about bad quarterbacks from Dabo, nope, 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 we're not talking say about Deshaun it, Watson. Say it, anymore. Say we're not giving Deshaun Do Watson it. another five seconds. We're Do done it. with it. Do you it, just gave him like 10. <laughs> All right, so uh, before we move on tight – or not before we move on tight – moving on from tight ends, let's talk about our arrests this week. Uh, we had a couple dummies get arrested this week. I oh, mean, yeah. Speaking for, of while we're on the Jaguars – yeah, for dumb stuff too, right? So, so I don't know. I know more about the other guy. Uh, what do we know about Zay Jones? Why this? Why did? Why did he, he get arrested? What is this? He that, yanked a chain off his girlfriend's neck. It on, was oh. domestic battery. <laughs> she has a good lawyer. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Let me is, just uh, look, let me just pull up my roster real quick because they're both on my team right now. Oh, uh, no. Yeah, that makes sense. No, that tracks. That tracks. Oh. That's the kind of character hey. Caleb would be drafting, clearly. Zay Jones has been hurt anyway. And you had Alvin Kamara, who missed time for charges for beating <laughs> wholesale ass on a guy. Yeah. Caleb, did you draft the all-prison team? Do you have Chris Olave? Hey, they come back aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> they come back wanting to play football. because Zay Jones has only played in three games anyways. So, uh, fantasy bust, right? Fantasy yeah. garbage player. Click. We need a stamp. I need like a like a button for a stamp. Yo, on speaking it. of also busts and the Jaguars, Calvin Ridley has been the biggest bust for where he was drafted. That's true. He's, I'll say that for where he's drafted. God, yeah. he's wide receiver forty three. He started so strong with that twenty five point game. Dude like, was going in like third, fourth rounds in drafts. He had that twenty five point game, and people were like, "We freaking did it! We yep. won a championship with this pick." You know? Uh, no. Not so much. He missed a couple nah, years. Dude, of I've been telling y'all for two years. This is Christian yeah, Kirk's team. Yeah, he's been he's been okay. Like he's not been a liability, but where you drafted him, that hurt you. That nah, hurt dude. you bad. I've been the biggest homer. Christian Kirk's team. Two years now I've been saying it. All right, so Zay Jones pulled a chain off of his girlfriend or his partner's uh, uh, neck. Whatever. He caught charges for it. I think Don't it's be technically dumb. a fiance if you want to get real technical. Yeah. Is it still a fiance? Uh, probably not. Now that would be like, no that would be one of those things where you go like, "Are you serious?" You know what I mean? Like we didn't like. How could that still be a thing? Yeah. 
Let's see. She indicated to police that Jones was upset she was taking their kid back to Orlando, and he ripped the uh, he ripped the the thing off. So okay, all right. Uh, so watch out for your arrest, people. All right, Caleb. Since you got him on your roster, what about Michael Thomas? What did this dummy do? I have no Wait, idea. Did Michael Thomas know. get arrested? Did yeah, I? Yeah, so Michael this? Thomas caught charges. Let me tell you what, what this the hell. Did. He almost didn't play at all last week because. Oh of shit! I remember. Oh, he did nothing. He also did. did nothing. So it's not that big. Uh, truthfully. If what he said happened, I I don't I don't condone throwing bricks at trucks, but the guy had it coming. So uh, he caught charges for um, for I think it was domestic battery or something like that, something like uh, that. property damages. It's a misdemeanor charge, but he threw bricks at a truck and uh, and I think he hit the guy uh, for the truck. I the problem he hit was a window is all I heard. Yeah, the problem was they're doing some work in his neighborhood, and he said the guy was filming him. Um, because he's like a you know he's a celebrity, right? And so he got mad at that. Uh, what, what's Jordan say? He took that personal, or I took offense to that. And uh, he went outside and thought, "I'm gonna throw bricks in his truck." That's what we do, you know. So, uh, and th- so they promptly called the police. And uh, I remember him. reading this report. Now, the guy, the worker, was parked in front of Michael Thomas's driveway. <laughs> he got irate, asking him to move. The guy pulled out his camera. And then that made Michael Thomas even more angry and mm. whatever. And threw bricks. After that. Yeah. yeah. Threw bricks. Yeah, you know. A logical thing to do when you're upset, you throw things. At My question people. is, what was his completion percentage? Should he be playing quarterback? For <laughs> no, 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 no. And, and let me tell you, no, if somebody's backing up Derek Carr, I'm trying to tell y'all, it's not Jameis Winston. Is okay? Carr out this week? Isn't Jameis probably going to play? They're yeah, all out no- this week because the Saints are playing this week. Oh, yeah, is that? Oh, okay, um, next week. Next week. Run by. Um, it, I think, I don't think it should be Jameis. I know this is off topic, but I love talking about Saints, clearly. Uh, it should be Taysom. So people were freaking out because Jameis threw two touchdowns last week. But, like, just as quickly as he got them back in the game, he got them back out, too. He threw yeah, two yeah. picks to back up those two touchdowns. It's, which it's the Jameis experience. Jameis it's the Jameis experience. <laughs> he's, he's, like, 50-50 touchdowns. Always there, 50-50. Also, apparently, is the Josh Allen experience. Oh, that's true. Shout Josh out. Allen is Brett Favre. Yeah, Quote yeah. me on this. <laughs> yeah, at least he's not Jay Cutler, though. Uh, yeah. At least, because Jay Cutler has that gunslinger title too, and you would clearly take one over the other, mm-hmm. right? Maybe that's the Bears. I don't know. I don't know. The Bills are dysfunctional too. The um, Bears can't figure out a quarterback for the past twenty years. So, you didn't like Jay Cutler? Are you trying to tell me you didn't like famous like, Bears quarterback Jay Cutler? I like playing him twice a year. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, we can't talk to you about quarterbacks though. You've been so incredibly spoiled. You're, Jordan Love you're is trash. Though. Though. Yeah, Jordan Love is trash. Shout out Jordan Love, man. Trash. We thought you had all. We the thought it was it. I was. Dude, I somewhere. never thought. I never thought that. We did. We were truthers of Jordan Love at the front of this year, and um, so far, fucking wrong there too, Nolan. I've been we're wrong a keep lot a tally. this year. No, I, I decided next year we're gonna keep a tally. We're gonna go like like calls made, and then we're gonna check it the next week or the end of season, whatever the call yeah. is. And uh, I want to know because uh, it was bad. Yeah, it's not have been a good year for, for me. Yeah. So, Caleb, you know what? Um, what? Uh, now, now we're just spitballing real quick, and then we'll we'll wrap this up. Caleb, you know what? Uh, underdog fantasy is. Somewhat. So they do best ball drafts. Uh, they do a bunch of stuff now, but like what they're famous for is best ball drafts. Let me tell you that to fill in the gap before the football season started, Noel and I spent a multi three digit number each. On drafts. Oh, and let me tell you that Noel and I currently are in the money for a double digit number or less each <laughs> based on that stake. It has been a brutal experience. I have $444 and I'm currently winning 25 To be fair, <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, 100 of that was underdog's money. Okay, yeah, we got $100. Fine. At least you guys won money at the casino this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that was me. This guy did. Both yeah. of you did, and yeah. I was there yeah, to watch yeah. all of it. As I lost all. Well, of it. and if we go back to the casino, we're going to Gold Strike. Yeah, we're, we're going not, to the other not, one. Don't promote yeah, casinos do, on right. here. You bleep Gold Strike out. Yeah, bleep. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, Caleb, you're our new audio guy. Apparently, we'll we'll have you yeah. surprise. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm not editing. Suck. Nope. You could, a bleep though. would be an editor. 
Yeah, you could though. I mean, and y'all don't have the money to pay me to be your editor. <laughs> Nolan, do people get paid for this show? Wow, I didn't realize we were getting paid. Holy shit. Oh, some people do. You guys don't. Not us. <laughs> yeah, that's clear. Yeah, clearly, clearly. Um, all right. Maybe well, if you got somebody with a better voice on to do your intro when you're. Nolan, you can do deep voice, right? Yeah. Nolan, give us your best. Give us your best deep voice. I can do deep voice. That's not bad. It's the best I got. I sound like a golem. <laughs> All right, look, we're gonna wrap this thing up. Uh, More remember, work, my lord. Stop. Radio. Right right I'm, t- I'm, t- I'm t- we talking so about cute. that. <laughs> uh, all right, look, we're wrapping this thing up. Uh, moving on to the next week. So this week was quarterback tight ends. We're trying to prep you for your playoffs. Next week will either be running backs or wide receivers. In true three-man buck bed fashion, we won't decide that until we yeah. decide to record. Day of. Um, to make sure that the content is uh, authentic for you. Yeah. So also, uh, check us, out, uh, check us yeah. out on YouTube. Check us out on Spotify. Check us out on the Fantasy Football Advice Network. Uh, we appreciate you listening in. And Caleb, let, Nolan, let's give it Let's give it up for Caleb. Caleb making it on the show finally. Hooray. He's been asking him for weeks, okay? We've been Hooray. asking him for weeks. And he's, yeah. and he's definitely not muted. He can tell you uh, clearly that we asked him every single week to come in. So, look, we appreciate y'all. Uh, check us out next week uh, uh, for another episode of Three Men Buck Bed. Peace. Peace.